Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy July 4th as we go to the par to Parsha today. The today is on chapter 17. Boom! Verse number 16. And God spoke to Moshe and Dabal may so speak to the Jewish people. And take from that from each one of them a mata, a stick. Mata le base of is a stick for each and every fa every each and every family. Uh, to the tribe, may ace call the CM from all the heads of the tribe, the base of the head of the families. Shnei us a is take twelve staffs. When each one put his name on that stick. The shame Adam and then they take the Adam. Take the Mata Levi, take the the Adam's name, put it on the tribe of Levi. Kimata Echel the Leish Beis because I want to have a stick for each and every one of the tribes. Rashi says even though I've divided them into two families, Levi, I have the tribe, I have the Levi and the Kehanim, which each each come out of the tribe of Levi. Nevertheless, the family of Kohuna is separate from the family of is separate. Is nevertheless one tribe. So even though the Kahanim and Leviim are separate families, but they come out of the same tribe. They're all from the tribe of Levi. We knocked them bail made and put it in the in the in the in the tent of meeting. Naya Aidus before the Aurain. Ashevai Lakashama, which I commune with you there. By Haya Isha Sharafha Bay Mate Yiprach and the man who I've chosen, you'll see that the matter will blossom. And will take away from me the uh, arguments, the complaints of the Jewish people. Which they complain against you. Now she says, The waters will subside. They'll see, they'll see that you'll see what I'll show them. And then they will they'll realize that it's no secret, everything is revealed. I have I, I've chosen the tribe, I've chosen the tribe, I've chosen Aaron, etc. So this is what Mesha Bain has said to the Jews. Every head of the tribe gave him matter. Gave him a stick. Nasi echad. Each and every tribe gave him a stick. Mata nasi echad. Each and every tribe had a stick. Levesa vaysam to the twelve tribes. Shnei masam matas. They're all together. Twelve sticks. Mata adin besechem, and the mata adin adin stick was between them. Now she said, "In ichah be emtzei put it in the front. He put it in the middle. Shalayim mitzad shin. He said, oh, you put it closer to God. Whatever. Put it in the middle, and that's it. We don't know why it's matam from Hashem." By Omeid and Moshe placed the sticks in the in the in the tent of meeting. By Yimah Machas, it was the next day. By Omeid, Moshe by Omeid, Moshe Ben came to the Omeid in a farach mata alav in the vase of vase, and the staff of 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 the house of Levi blossomed. It gave forth blossoms. It's a farach. By it's a tzitz and sprouted buds. By Yikmal Shkedim and it it had ripened almonds. Now she says, "Yetsi farak mashbo." It started to blossom. Tzitz is a uh, the, the budding of the fruit after the blossom falls off. Vayig moshkedim, when the fruit was recognized, it was recognized as almonds. Similar expression is found in the chu grew and wean vayig mail. This is an expression is frequently found used in reference to fruits of the tree, as in the buds turn into ripened grapes. Now, why did it particularly have almonds out of all fruits? That is the fruit that blossoms the quicker than other fruits. Likewise, he who poses the kahuna, his punishment comes quickly, as we find in the case of Aziah and Tzadas shun upon his forehead. So, the, so when they go against kahuna, kahanim, your response is pretty quick. Taigam unklus regnus and knotted almonds, like a cluster of almonds knotted together one on top of the other. Yetzay meishas kala mates. Moshe Rabbeinu took out all these sticks, all these staffs, of Ne Hashem before God, of Kovane Yisrael to entire Jewish people, Vayiru, and they saw it, Vayikru Ishmateu, and each and every one of them took their stick. And that's the ending of the Chumash for today. We go to Tanya Day, we continue in chapter 7 of the Alter Rebbe of Shada Yichud Ve'amuna. The portrayal of faith and unity. We continue the Alter Rebbe story. So the Alter Rebbe ended yesterday with the concept of the Malik Alam, explaining the Malik Alam, how through great contractions, and uh, and and uh, the Abish to ultimately in various ways, the Abish to God ultimately the energy of God that is infinite comes into a finite entity, 
so that the finite, the purpose is that God is there without becoming finite. But the purpose is that the entity should feel finite. That the physical entity should not be nullified to the energy, to the life force that, that is in it. So therefore, they got contracted, so to say. Contracted it so that each and every physical entity should have their feeling of who they are, whether they are doimim, tzemeh, chayim, adab. Whether they're inanimate objects, vegetation, animals, or humans. The source of the life force is the breath of the mouth of God. Which enclosed itself in the ten utterances of the Torah, where the Torah says, "Let there be." As the Mishnah says, "Asara, my mother, with ten utterances that God created the world." Divine Hashem, the Word of God, so to say, is within every is within the world on a constant basis, as it gives life force to the world. So the word of God is within the world at this present time. From the breath of his mouth. Could have diffused without end with and limit. And Kate therefore created unlimited worlds. Infinite in their quality, quantity and quality. To give them life force forever. Unlike the, their present state in which they are limited in all respects. And its corporal world, with all its being, if, if, if it wasn't contracted, all these the limits are, are, are finite, would not have been created at all. It was thus the contraction, it was the contraction of the life force that made it possible the creation of this physical limited world with its finite creatures. The reason why the breath of his mouth would not have been contracted would have created a world without end is now explained by the Alter Rebbe in a parenthesis. Because thus like God, Kaddish Baruch Hu, blessed He, is infinite. So so is His attributes. And His actions are infinite. Because Him and His actions are one. So therefore really, if it was for the Word of God itself, there would be infinite. The world will still be infinite. Because the word of God, the Tata, follow the Tata, the blueprint of the world. The Tata is infinite. That means a life force that emanates from the attributes of God. When it's namely kindness and mercy, and the other holy attributes of God, through their being clothed, the breath of the mouth, which refers to Svidas Hamalchus, we know <coughs> that in the S is Svidas, in the ten emanations of God, you have, in the, especially in the motions of God, you have Chesed and Gevura to Fetus. Those are the three main kindness, severity, and mercy. All clothe themselves in Dibur, which so too is man. Man also all clothe itself in Dibur. It all comes down to the way a person speaks. That's why hachayim v'amav is biyad aloshin in the way. The life and death is in the hands of the mouth, in dibur, in the way it expresses itself. The way chesed expresses itself through the mouth. So through everything comes through in the spiritual way too. Everything that happens in the physical way happens in the spiritual way. So everything that 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 that, that a person has in the the, the, the malchus and your malchus, my malchus, my dibur, my speech, so to say, is God's speech. That the son of my mother is the expression of God's. That's why it says Olam Chesed On One hand, it says the world was created through Chesed. And then it says Asar of my mother's that the world was created through speech. But it's the it's the speech. It's the chesed that comes through speech. The chesed that it comes through speech. That's why it says that is also the concept of chesed. The chesed's ways are peaceful or pleasant because the abish is God's expression of the teda, which is malchus also, which is the devar Hashem. Teda is the word of God, is also an expression of God's chesed. 
of God's kindness and God's mercy. As it says, the creation resulted in God's speech, the breath of his mouth. As it says in the Teda, he spoke. Teda not davening every day. The Abish spoke and it came into being. Moreover, the creation came about through Chesed. The world was created through Midas Chesed, even sometimes that the world comes through Gevura. It is because ultimately the world is created through a contraction, which is Gevura, but it's an expression of Chesed. It's Chesed Sheba Gevura. We explained this many times. The world is built through Chesed, but how is it the world is created both through Chesed and Malchus? The word of God, this means that the attribute of chesed, that's the concept, the attribute of chesed vested itself in malchus, that's dibur. And, it, and it, which means many things, because we know the malchus, the attribute of kingship, has many, many interpretations, many, many levels to it. And that's why it says, with Dvar Hashem, creation took place through the word of God, Viruach Piv, and the breath of his mouth. Which became the vessel and the garment to the created attribute of Chesed. So Chesed, kindness of God, God created the world through Chesed. This Chesed came through the concept of Dibur, which is Malchus, kingship, and it created everything in the world. For a snail. Whose garment is integral component of the body. The Gemara gives an example of a snail. The snail is the, the covering is its body. It's not that there's two entities. Take this take the covering off, the snail dies. The word of his mouth is thus a garment in a vessel that united with the attribute of Chesed. And that's the so the Gemara gives also the same example that the Abish, so the Dvar Hashem is God, because the analogy of the snail. And it's garment. It doesn't have two entities. One entity to the snail. That's what makes it a snail. The force emanating from the breath of his mouth is thus capable of creating worlds. So that's why if it was dust for the Dvar Hashem, if it was dust for the Dvar Hashem, it would be unlimited. It would still be unlimited. Both in quantity and both in quality. Holy and blessed be he contracted the light and the life force that can diffuse from the breath of his mouth. And that's why it says There was 10 words. How do you create from the 10 words all this world? You would think that the world would have 10 things. But the world has billions of things. Because you have, as we explained in many times, Chsidis, that these words have multiple ways of using these words. words. And not only their ways, as it says over here, Surufiyah is the invested combination of letters of the ten utterances. And the combinations of their combinations. And if you know all the ways that the words, as we said before, the letters are interchangeable, and then you have Gematia, etc., etc. So the many bechlufer tumeraisis atzmam, so the substitute of the transportation of the letters themselves, and then you have the numerical value and equivalent to mispadim. So there are many ways that these words are manipulated. The atbash, which we translate, we flip the words from aleph to to, to tough. Aleph becomes a tough, tough to become aleph. We have what we explained before many times in the that the letters are interchangeable. Certain letters are interchangeable. In the way they are guttily sound, etc. Each substitute, each substitution and transformation indicates the descent of the light and the life force degree by degree. So that way, Kabbalah says, for like men explained the echad and the void, that echad means one and void and interchangeable because vav ayindalas are interchangeable in the word echad. So Echad and Vod, it both mean the same thing, which means one. But one is written clearly. Echad is one. And one is through an interchangeable concept, which is, which is the concept of a symptom. So I, I cannot see it clearly. I have to know the combination. 
And I need to know the secret, the code. So some things are written openly. Some things are written through codes. And there are many, many codes. It's famous that I'm banned. He says that if you really look at the Torah, it's all oh, Yudke, Vavke, Yudke, Vavke, Yudke, Vavke. How does he see it? He knows how to interchange those letters and have the and, and be able to see the name of Hashem in each letter. It's a famous Gemara, a famous story that the, that the Gemara says that each and every person can find his name in the Torah. Every person can find his name in Hazinu. In one Pasha, it says every person can find his name, his name in the son of. You have to know how to use the letters. If you know how to, to change the letters, you can find there's a famous book, the Torah, the book of codes, which that's only one concept, the way the Torah, the, the, the letters are, are, written, are written in a code of different uh, distance from one another. There's many ways to uh, to understand the Torah, the Torah is the word is there. So the word, that's why the Gemara always says, that's you never take the Torah away from the simple word, even though there's a lot of codes in the Torah. And there's a lot of codes of codes. And everything is in the Torah. And that's why it says, Everything is in the Torah. There's nothing, because the Torah is the blueprint of the world. So the words of God, the Torah, is the blueprint of everything in this world. As the Gemara says, the Abish looked at the Torah, so to say, and that's why it says also in the Mishnah, that 2,000 years before the creation of the world, I mean, 2,000 levels before the creation of the world, the Torah was there already. So the Torah is the creation of the world. And everything that's in this world comes from the Devar Hashem, comes from the Torah. You have to simply know how to be able to see it within the Torah. So they'll be able to create and give life to the creatures whose quality and, qu- and signifies is lower than the quality and signifies the creature created from the very letters of the word of ten others. So you have certain words in the Torah, animals, for example, that says open the Torah, shir, chamer, even a chazir. So you have these words that give, that is, is the meaning of the law. So we have certain animals that the Torah says, but there's thousands upon thousands of animals. In the world, thousands upon thousands of birds in the world. But nevertheless, they all are created from the word of God. Certain of them are created through the Pasuk itself, Shur, Hamur, etc. And certain of them are Sus, but certain of them are coming out from the mixes of these letters. Which within these, these, these a mixture of letters and, and words. Holy One, blessed be in His glory and His essence, which are His attributes, since they are one with Him, ultimately, the essence of God are in all these combinations, but they are they are hidden from a person unless the person searches out and finds it. But not that they're not there. The difference is something a person can see in the creation of the world. A person can see it openly, and some things you have to find it through uh, through learning and through deciphering and through decoding, etc., etc. So that's the difference. The difference is to me, I need to decode it. Sometimes I can decode it. Sometimes someone can tell me how to decode it. But everything can be found in the Torah. Every aspect of the will can be found in the Torah, in Dvar Hashem. Some things are revealed. Some things are hidden. But to God, there's no such kind of concept. Because the, the, the letter and the decoding of letters, the letter itself is a creation. The decoding of letters, the Vat Hashem itself is a creation. So ultimately to him, it's all in a revealed manner. Like, you told, like to certain people, all this is a, may, might be in a revealed manner. And they might know every source of the, like Adam Arishan. It says Adam Arishan named every animal in the world. Every animal he named. He knew the exact naming and decoding of name and he knew the exact source of every single animal in the world because he understood he knew it to him it was revealed to most of us it's not revealed to him it was revealed that completes the Tanya of the day today is the 28th day of the month which is a special day in the Chabad calendar because it's a day that the Rebbe was uh, was was 
was saved from the from from Nazis, the Nazis and the Russians, and made it to the shores of America on this day, the twenty eighth day of Sivan. So it's a yontif tas celebration besides the Fourth of July. So the Fourth of July is America is America's uh, uh, freedom, and uh, today is uh, when the Rebbe came to actually America, and was freed from his. Uh, confinement and ultimately what we have today is because of that. So uh, it's a celebration by all. And today is uh, the Tilim. To, for your Tilim of the day is chapter 135 to chapter 139. If you do those six chapters, do the Chitas of the day. And I invite you all, my friends, today at 10 o'clock, just in a shower, hour and a half, you can come back again, either come to Chabad, or on Zoom, and we'll learn a beautiful sikha on the Rebbe on a portion of Kairach. Have a wonderful and beautiful day.